In this video, I'm going to talk to you about why the imminent release of the love child of the Mavic 3 Pro and the Mini 3 Pro, you've guessed it, the DJI Air 3, is likely to lead us to have some new firmware upgrades and features added to the Mavic 3. This is only speculation, but quite often what happens is that when you get new features added to drones, such as a new release like the Air 3, um, those features will then trickle down into other drones of that generation as well. That's happened in the past a lot, there's no reason it shouldn't happen now, but this is only speculation. Before I get started with that, I'll just recover some of the um, specifications that have been leaked, and I'll talk about which ones of those will most likely also trickle down into the Mavic 3, which is reason for excitement. Okay, so let's get started. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the cameras, which is the most interesting for most of us. And I'm going to grab both of these drones for good reason, because the DJI Air 3 is speculated to have a two-camera system, a main 24mm camera with a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor, f1.7 and about 24mm um, focal length, which basically means it's going to be the same camera as you've got on the Mini 3. Exactly the same camera. There's also a quad bayer sensor. The second camera is going to be a 70mm, so three times if you like, camera with the same sensor, so 1 over 1.3, quad bayer sensor again, um, with an aperture of 2.8 and a focal length of 70mm, which is basically the same as you've got on the Mavic 3 Pro. So that's why essentially the Air 3 is like the love child of these two drones. It's taking two of the best features of both of these drones. The main camera on the Mini 3 Pro is fantastic. It's a really, really good camera. Not as good as the Mavic 3, but it's not that far off it. I mean, if you take side-by-side -side pictures, this is such a good camera. So, especially for such a, a small sensor. And the fact that it's an f1.7, very nice wide aperture, means you get great low light capabilities as well. As far as the three times camera, that's been something that got people very excited about the Mavic 3 Pro. It produces fantastic results, um, videos and stills, and I can see why DJI would use that to propel the Air 3. Neither of those cameras are going to have variable apertures, but if you're familiar with the Air line of DJI drones, they don't tend to have any variable apertures. The Air line is supposed to be a travel drone, an adventure drone with great capabilities, but a slightly simpler build and a lower budget as well. It's going to have omnidirectional obstacle detection. So again, that's an upgrade from the previous Air 2 line of drones. A 46 minute flight time, again, an upgrade from the previous Air line of drones. 46 minutes, similar to the original Mavic 3 and just a little bit longer than the Mavic 3 Pro. So again, that's a great result. And it's also going to feature the new 04 transmission system, which is supposed to give you 20 kilometers of range. So. There you go. That's, uh, if you want to break the law, you can really break it now. There's going to be a DJI RC2 option, which is essentially this controller, the RC1, but with two antennas sticking out of it. So the kind of system that we're familiar with, the RC Pro. And in essence, that's DJI saying that, whoops, we got that a little bit wrong with the first iteration of the RC. But no worries, we'll produce a new one which has the antennas on it to give you the range that we expect. But to be honest, from my personal experience, I find this one's always been fine. And if you're trying to stay legal, uh, you won't need to fly as far as that's going to allow you to go. But it might be good for penetration and tricky environments. HDR video capabilities with both cameras, because it's a quad bay sensor and we'd have not to use that. Maximum video rate is 100 frames per second and HDR up to 60 frames per second. And you'll be able to uh, film in D log M as well as HLG format and presumably normal color formats as well. So one thing that I'm actually really excited about that I haven't mentioned yet about the DJI Air 3 is the new battery hub. It's going to have a similar design to the uh, mini line of drones where the battery hub is kind of like a storage device, something that you can kind of store your batteries in and transport them in, which you can't really do with the Mavic 3 um, hubs. But as well as then being able to charge all three batteries at the same time, which is another new feature, you can also press a button and then use residual power from part charged batteries to give you one fully charged battery. And that's a fantastic feature. I would love that sort of thing to come to the Mavic 3 because maybe a new type of hub or something like that. Because if you are traveling, it's quite often the case that you'll have two, three batteries at 30, 40%. And to be able to convert that into one battery at nearly 100% to give a full flight would be fantastic. I would love that. Nice. 
So that's pretty much the main differences of the DJI Air 3. Nothing bound breaking in there. It's going to use the DJI Mavic 3's type, uh, body type um, with thin arms, uh, omnidirectional sensors using wide angle lenses, and it's going to have a dual camera system, which people are starting to enjoy more and more and more. So let's go into the first of the two features which I'm speculating will trickle into the Mavic 3. And it's only speculation, but there's no reason why it shouldn't happen, and you'll probably see why when I explain this. So the first one is the ability to shoot in vertical format. Now with the Mini 3 Pro, you can already do that. You can actually press a button and this entire camera will turn like this into vertical mode and you can shoot footage, which will be perfect in 4K for your YouTube shorts and reels and various social media content as it's becoming more and more popular these days. With the Map 3 you can do that, but you'd have to crop your footage in post and it's going to be a low res version. With the Mini 3 Pro, because you're turning the entire camera, you're producing 4K content, and that's fantastic. Okay, so how does the Air 3 produce 2.7K vertical footage? Well, it doesn't do it by rotating the camera, it does it by using the full sensor space that's available. Because, let's say we're using a 12 megapixel sensor, it's, okay, so it's a, a um, quad bay, a 48 megapixel, but we know that it's really 12 megapixels for all intents and purposes. That sensor is going to have 3,000 pixels vertically and 4,000 horizontally. Now horizontally, you're going to use most of those 4,000 to give you 4K footage. But vertically, 4K is just short of 2,000 pixels, so you're only using two-thirds of the sensor. For the um, 2.7K footage, if you use 3,000, so using the entire vertical height of the sensor, you can produce 2.7K footage. So this is where it gets interesting, because if we take any of the Mavic 3 line of drones, the Pro, the Classic, or the Original, we have a whopping 20 megapixel sensor. And that sensor has a pixel size of just under 4,000 pixels vertically, which is going to be the limiting factor to what vertical video footage you could produce. If we film in 5.1K, that video format only has 2,700 pixels vertically. So there's still a lot of space top and bottom of the sensor that we're not using. But if in the same way as the Air 3 we can use the entire sensor space vertically to produce vertical footage, we should be able to use the just short of 4,000 pixels to give you full 4K footage vertically. And it's speculation. There's no guarantee we're going to get it, but in terms of the hardware and what's on this drone, there's no reason why we shouldn't get it. And that's something to be really excited about, because I would love to be able to produce 4K vertical footage with this drone through a firmware update. So, fingers crossed it's going to come. If I was a betting man, I would say it's a 50-50, 50, 50, 50 that we'll get it, maybe 50 that it'll be released in a later firmware um, upgrade. But um, if it doesn't get produced, then, well, maybe some of us should ask DJI and beg them to release it for this drone, because it'll be great. So the other feature which will most likely be um, released for both of these drones, I can't see why it wouldn't be, is a new tilt shift effect. Tilt shift effect or toy town effect is basically where you blur the top and bottom of the um, the image. Something that you can produce in post quite easily. Um, you, apparently, you can do it with a press of the button, and apparently, it's very effective with the three times camera or seventy times uh, seventy millimeter camera that you have on the um, Mavic Three Pro or the coming Air Three. I can see it already. The internet's going to be absolutely flooded with this new effect, which is going to look fun and it, it is great. But yeah, use responsibly because. It can be overdone. But yeah, there you go. A bit of extra fun there using that new feature, something to get excited about. Um, lots of videos out there if you want to already do it because it's a very straightforward effect to do via Photoshop or Premiere or whatever editing suit you're using. But yeah, apparently you can do it with a press of a button soon and that'll be great. So those are the two features which I'm predicting or hoping are going to trickle into these drones. Something to get excited about. Um, it is just speculation, but there's some good grounds for it, and hopefully we'll get those features. If we don't, make sure to write to DJI and ask them really nicely that they can introduce them, because they should. And until next time, happy flying, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.